Hey everybody, it's Andy. Thursday, live off hours time, where every week at 11 Central in the US, Harley, Ginger, and I help you build a career you love. And I'm hoping I'm on the right channel today. I'm trying to see it in my peripheral vision with this space capsule in front of me. Looks like another one of me popped up, so I'm guessing we're good to go. So I see there's a whole ton of people in the chat, and I've got three chats going. <laughs> Actually, I got four chats going right now. So I hope I'm not going to get discombobulated and all confused. But great to have you. Get in the chat. Say hi. Like I always say, let me know who you are. Let me know what you need. Let me know where you're from, what you do. Put some question marks in front of your questions. Pretty please. The chat gets really lively. I want it to be lively. I want you to share with each other. I want you to meet people from across the world. And if I'm the conduit for that, nothing could throw me more. So get in there. Say hi. I'm... I know a lot of you showed up early, like four hours ago, so I'm not sure if I got everybody's chat here. I'm going to do my best. Maybe uh, maybe Kara and Stacy, my trusty cohorts, they have blue wrenches, can help me figure this out. But uh, I do have some announcements today. I, I've got something very special. It's very free, very powerful, very fun, very, very effective. So uh, hang on, let me make sure that I do something so I don't hear beeps. Uh, looks like everything is good. Yeah, hit the like button, please, if you're enjoying my, my series that I've been doing for two years on Thursdays. Let's, uh, I've got Daniel Mahias first, although I thought I saw some earlier chats, and if, uh, if, if Kara or Stacy has earlier chats, I have him at 9.05, but I'm I'm I thought I saw some earlier ones from like seven something in the morning. If I if I missed if I missed those, can you if you have them in your in your um, chat, please please send them to me. But let's uh let's see what we got here. Um, I got one from Daniel says hi Andy. Hope you are doing great. I've been in my job for seven months. Business development leader in a telco. Awesome. The job and company are good, but my relationship with my boss sucks. I do not like him, and I am sure he doesn't like me either. Would it be too early to start looking for a job? These guys are draining my energy, and let's... Okay, so first part of his question. Hope you're doing great. Been in a job seven months. And, uh, and is not getting along with his boss. So the question is, is it too early to look for another job? So all this stuff to me is based on spin and interpretation, right? Your ability to spin the story, somebody else's ability to, uh, to right, interpret it correctly as far as you're concerned. Here's what I will always say to you, whether it, Daniel, whether it's seven months, whether it's three days, three months, or three years. I have a pecking order, and it goes a little something like this. Andy's happiness and mental state of mind, first and foremost. <laughs> right? I'm talking about when it comes to my career. right? And, and actually, that's pretty much most of my life, but I'm willing to sacrifice myself for my wife. Um, and then, and then how it, how it appears to other people. That's it. Never the two shall change ever, ever. So, uh, I, I think there's a, a, a way to tell that story. You are not the only person who, you know, didn't like their job after seven months. I do feel like when, if you do leave, you, you, if you are that miserable, you can afford to leave, meaning you can do without a paycheck, knowing that you're going to have to go job searching. Or if you already have a job lined up, then then out you go. Uh, I wouldn't be worried about how I'm going to have to tell that story three years down the road. I would just be more focused on my happiness today and how I would how I would work the transition into unemployment or into that new job. I don't think it's too uh, uh, early to leave. And I also have I if I sat down with you, I'd have other questions for you. Like for example, how long have you been working? Let's just say, sake of argument, you've been working ten years. If you worked somewhere for four years, somewhere for five years or six years, and you got a new job, and seven months later you decided you wanted to leave, right? No big deal, right? But if you worked a year, then somewhere else for two, then somewhere else for six months, and so on, and now you want to leave after seven months, 
then I think you need to go watch my best answer to the job hopper question video. So it, you got to keep it in context. Context is everything. And by the way, I'm going to talk more about context because I got a great special coming up next Thursday that's free. Same same time, same place, although it would be good if you registered for my um, power, uh, per, power of your personal story. And this is part of your story. So that's my take on that. I... I think anything can be articulated in an effective manner. So I hope that helps. And Kara is telling me we had some others, and I I can't put these up on the screen, but I'm going to answer the questions. Uh, I got James Palmer, my friend from Georgia. And his question is, I have an initial phone interview tomorrow. What are your best practices for these things? James, my best practices for the phone interview are all the same practices that I would give you for an interview in general. I want to point you to a couple of places and anybody else who's got a phone interview who's not in my job search boot camp, the places that I would go is there's a video out there about the six questions, six big questions you need to ask in your interview screen, in your job interview screen. I'm assuming it's a it's a screen. You said initial interview. I also have a can you believe it? A written article on my blog. Yes, people still do those things uh, about how to ace the phone interview. And uh, I wrote it quite a, quite a while back, but all eight or nine of the things that I cited apply. I would look at those two places. And then obviously all the other stuff that I've given you, the three keys to ace any job interview webinar and all that good stuff would be great. That, that would be, those would be my best, my best practices. All right. Let's see. We got. Ooh, getting my getting my signals crossed here. Hang on. I got. I, I There are entirely too many windows open on my screen. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Am DFP seventy nine. Dana from New York. I'm a senior exec with a broad background and have been looking for a while. Uh, I was looking for operations roles, but it's not working out and was considering switching focuses to product management. No formal background, but developed and launched a platform and a SaaS product, software as a service product. What's the quickest way to ramp up the search? Should I identify 10 to 15 contacts, so on and so forth? Can I do this? Can I do that? And so on. Okay. Uh, all right. Hang on. I'm going to make this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually answer the question that you should have asked me. And the question isn't, uh, I'm, I'm looking for this, it's not working out, should I switch? The question you should be asking me is, or if it's something that you truly want, okay, so I'm gonna make some assumptions because I don't know who you are or, or, or much about you. If you were looking for operations roles, I'm guessing that's because you're an operations person and you want to stay in operations. If something is not, if something is not working, uh, I would say don't abandon it. I would say troubleshoot what's actually going wrong or, or to, to, just, to determine what you could do better. When people say things to me, I'm not saying, Dana, you said this to me, but when people say, oh, I've tried everything, I, I it makes my skin crawl. It makes my skin crawl when people think they've tried every possible thing to do. Because if you truly want something badly enough, there is a solution as long as you're focused, you work it the right way, and you stay with it long enough. It's true. It's a fact. So, so the first thing is I would go and I would troubleshoot how I was actually searching. I, have, I had somebody the other day message me about, you know, I've been putting my resume into applicant tracking systems. I've submitted 400 applications. I've been job searching for months. And... My, my reaction is you haven't been job searching at all. Putting your resume in an applicant tracking system is not job searching. It, the applicant tracking system, so you're not going to beat the robot many, many times. You're going to only beat it a couple of percent. And even if you beat the bot, you have to, you have to beat the interviews. So, so most of the time when people say, well, I've tried everything and I'm spending a lot of time trying to beat the applicant tracking systems, you're not actually job searching effectively enough. I have a solution for you. I'm going to show you in a little while. Free solution, in fact. So the first thing, Dana, is I would go through the troubleshooting steps. If you're not getting interviews, check your covers and your resume and your networking capabilities and who you're targeting and all that good stuff. Now, if you want to switch, so let's say you legit want to switch. And you know what? I want to make I want to make a, a pivot from operations to product uh, product management. 
The fastest way to make a pivot is, aside from going and watching my video on the fastest way to make a career change, I, I literally have a video out there, the fastest way to make a career change, you focus on the biggies, the people you know, the companies you know, and even your own company or companies you've worked for that know you. And there's different, there's a, a different protocol that I would I would use to approach those, but those are gonna be your fastest ways to make a change. Changing within an existing company to a new role where you're a known commodity or a company you work used to work for, or go find all the people that know you from wherever for however long ago and target them at their at their companies or their new companies wherever they are and then there's a few other things that you can do but i would check that out T the 10 to 15 contacts and so on and so forth and all that stuff and you could run your search in parallel and do all that uh and do all that good stuff and then you were asking about my advice from the december uh, office hours that still applies that applies all year there's some tweaks you want to make uh but all that stuff applies so i hope that helped uh, check that stuff out. I think I think that'll I think that that will really really help you. All right, Tan Vancouver, Mr. Dan, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Hope you've recovered from your frustration from that little exchange we had. Uh, I was offered a sales job yesterday for a cybersecurity startup. Awesome! I love that. All right. Uh, well, hopefully, hopefully this is go, gonna go well. Can I just pause for a second? Congratulations. Can we all give Tan Vancouver, who's AKA Dan, uh, a, good, uh, a, a good high five there? All right, the offer is commission-based and that's it. I'm looking for full-time and benefits though. I'm in a career change, so do you think it's wise to take it, put it on my resume and keep looking for full-time with benefits? Would, uh, would this hurt or help? Um, okay, so I, I actually, uh, what was going through my head there, as you saw, like me thinking, is there's this woman, her name is Sherry. She's awesome, uh, around 50, probably 51 now, uh, boot camper like yourself, and she did um, the exact thing that you are doing. She literally took a, so she was in media sales, had been out of work, took a job uh, l selling speech services, actually speaker services, and she, it was a full-time commission, but it offered her a, a, like a 20K sign-on bonus. It gave her commissions. She was able to earn some, but she kept at it and kept looking for a position in software sales. And wouldn't you know, I got the text to prove it. Actually, some of you will probably see it here in the coming months, but, um, but, but, but that's what she did. Now, everything is about the context of your environment. If you need cash flow and they can't provide it and it's going to take you a little time to build up the commission, I, remember, everything you say yes to means you say no to something else. So if you say yes to this job, that means you're going to say no to full on fire power all day long searching that might yield something that is salary based with a bonus and so on and is a bit more stable financially for you so i don't have any issues with people who want to take chances and 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 see if something works out i think full commission is a tall order for somebody who's making a change who and and candidly i know your background and it it in my opinion is not going to be an easy adjustment to something that i'm assuming is a full-on sales role because you, you didn't specifically say it um oh you did you say the sales role so you're it, it's going to be a lot tougher than you think to make those sales especially if it's a startup and especially if they're an unknown um or, or don't have a huge rolodex from the leadership team so um, those are my thoughts. I can't tell you what to do, but you certainly can take the job and keep looking just like Sherry did. And she finally was able to break in. And this goes back to something I was saying a few minutes ago. She decided that she had run out of time that she was willing to give the software as a sales, the SaaS software sales searching. That's a, It was a complete change for her. She decided, I need money, I got kids that are going to college, and so on, so I'm going to call my backup plan, which is to take this job, but I'm not going to stop looking. And then and then six, seven, eight months later, however long it was, she ended up landing it. You could do the same thing. 
So, uh, but remember, you're gonna you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a full time job. So, those are my thoughts on that. I wish you a lot of luck. Um, you're a you're a good dude, and I remember our little Sunday morning conversation on the phone, and um, you know, so lots of luck with that. All right. All right. I want to make a quick announcement because I am totally stoked about this thing. Um, we've got a, we've got a, uh, we've got a, a, a next Thursday at this slot. We've got an event called the Power of Your Personal Story. Anybody who's anybody, everybody's got a story. Most people don't know how to tell it. I'm literally going to teach you how to how to construct and communicate the stories you want to tell about you that make you unique, valuable, and help you connect with people and help you people trust you and and be empathetic with people. It is all about building stronger connections, better connection with the job interviewer, better connection with the employers, better connection with your friends, better connection with anybody you meet at a networking meeting, all that good stuff. Next Thursday, the power of your personal story. And if you register by Sunday, you're going to get three email lessons, one Monday, one Tuesday, one Wednesday. Uh, Kara, can you do me a favor and pop up the link so that people can register? There's, there's, it's, it's really awesome. And we're, we're going to do it on YouTube like this. You'll be able to access it. But if you want the awesome workbook that I am absolutely slaving over, uh, all the samples, the workbook, all the things you need to do. This it's pretty good. Uh, I you need to, you need to register and then just just show up. Uh, it it is not going to be replayed. It is live and it is going to be recorded, but it's only going to be available for my leadership uh, community. But you can all attend for free. So I hope hope you join me for that. All right, Rena Wade. Oh man, you guys got okay. Hang on, I got so many. Uh, questions here in a row. Uh, Everything is so different now. You can feel lost. Best approach for getting back into the job search. Um, I would watch my job search videos. How do you take all of your accomplishments and narrow them into two to three sentences? You watch my career profile video. Should your cover letter be personal and witty? You should watch my cover letter videos. And from Texas, that's what I would do. Um, and then I see you got one more there, basically have a direct impact on the business cycle. Should this be covered in your cover letter? Just look at my cover letter samples. Check those out. Adrian Murphy. Hi, Andy. Love your videos and thank you. What types of questions should we as candidate asks in the phone interview? First interview, first, second. Okay. I'm not going to go through all these. I'm going to give you your first one. All right. Go back to the video that I mentioned for James Palmer about the six big questions to ask in your interview screen. I think that's the name of the video or yeah, it job interview screen. If Kara, can you, um, I can't see all the chats and where you are, but pop that, pop that in. Uh, it's, it's highly effective. I would also, uh, check out my, um, my, my webinar, interviewing webinar called three keys to ace any job interview. And I would check the article on my blog about how to ace the phone interview. And I would also, maybe as a as another announcement, interview intervention, communication that gets you hired. This book is free. The ebook is free. The audio book is free. You want me to ship this to your house? It's seven dollars materials and handling. So you pay for the envelope, you pay for the service fees for the guys to go get it that they charge me and all that good stuff. They pack it in an envelope. I pay for the shipping and all that good stuff. And uh, and you get this and you get the ebook and audio book right away. But I'll send it seven bucks anywhere in the world. So grab grab that. I would definitely take advantage of that. All right, hope that helps. All right, let me get Bernice here. Hey, Bernice Gonzalez, how are you? How can one effectively ID and self-assess on the skills necessary to move from mid to C levels? So there's a couple of, of things that you need to do. I'm going to give you a couple or three quick hits. Number one, the 
and I, 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 I want to say number one with caution because, and I'm going to make number one number one only because this is what most people would think to do. And I just want you to be really careful about this. So you're a mid level. If you want to go to C level, first thing is, I don't know why you want to be a C level. Okay. So the first thing that, so step zero is make sure that you understand what C level people do. Okay, people think they understand what C-level people do. Most of them don't. So I would talk to C-levels. I would talk to people on the career trajectory that you are. If you're in technology and you want to be a CIO, if you're in marketing and you want to be a CMO, if you're in finance and accounting and you want to be a CFO or whatever, or ops and you want to be a CEO or whatever, I would talk to them. What's it like? What do they enjoy? What are the struggles? What did it take? so on and so forth, all right? So, so understand first. Do some self-reflection. I have a, a, a video that I, series I did a long time ago about uh, the first five steps to career success. It's three-part video, and uh, it's, it's, it's pretty good. It, it helps you with self-assessment. I also have a video out there. It's one video on my YouTube channel about how to choose the right job. It's important that you go through the exercises in that series or in that video in order to figure out if you truly want that type of role. Then you have to what? Identify the gaps, right? So step two or three, depending on how you want to count, is what's the delta? Then the question is, based on the delta, is the delta something that I desire to close? Meaning, so let me give you an example. I am, I was a, for a long time, a, an IT consultant and I spent almost two decades and was an executive and then I became a recruiter. And I became a recru an executive recruiter and I opened up my own recruitment firm. And the gaps that I needed to learn in order to become a recruiter were things that I desired. The, the act of reaching out and offering somebody something uh, uh, to build a relationship with the possibility of something better in their life. And I liked all of that, but it was a skill I had to build in order to be proficient at what I was doing. Now, I look at... I look at a lot of people in this world and what a lot of people do is they think they might have a gap in skill or what we might might incorrectly or correctly refer to as a weakness that they feel like they have to close. And fact of the matter is that not every weakness needs to be closed, but if it's vital for you to be able to do that function, you're going to need to want to close it and you're going to need to be able to close it with a lot of hard work. So you have to look at what the gaps are. So in a lot of, as an example, in, 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 my, um, in my history, and now I'm a coach and a trainer, which is totally different, but, but back in my, the early parts of my career as a consulting, information technology consulting executive, a lot of what somebody needed to do in order to reach the C-levels was they needed to be able to sell. But not everybody could sell, and not everybody wanted to sell, even though they desired to be at the, you know, have a seat at at at, at the big boys and girls table. So, you know, that that's what I mean about identifying what the gaps are. For me to to be a coach in this fashion, I had to learn how to work a camera. I'm still learning how to work the damn live stream after four years of doing this stuff, and and, and but it's a skill that I had to work on that I had to be able to do, and I'm a CEO. I'm a nothing, you know, like it doesn't matter, right? It was a skill I needed in order to do what I wanted. This goes for anybody. It doesn't, it's not just about going from mid-level to C-level. It's about, should I go on this career track? Should I take this type of role? Should I assume these kind of responsibilities and all that good stuff? So there's a protocol to doing this. And I, I don't believe you are in, um, in my leadership program, but in my leadership monthly live program, we have a, a session next, next Friday. For everybody who is in that program, whether you're in on the, the monthly basis or you're in on the annual basis, the, the monthly, uh, it's a modest cost each month or it's half the cost over, over the course of the year. Everybody in that program uh, gets my Career Accelerator program. And one of the modules in the Career Accelerator program, the second module of five, is how to prepare for your promotion. And it, it talks in much more depth about the things that I'm, I'm mentioning now. And Bernice, it might be something that you want to consider. And it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty, pretty great program. And if you're in the monthly, um, monthly enrollment, 
uh, you get uh, you you get you get that that course as a bonus. If you're in the annual program, you get that course as a bonus, and you also get my goal setting. Uh, master class, which is another five module course. And so those might be some things you want to consider. And anybody who's interested, uh, you can check out the leadership. Maybe Kara can drop that page in the, in the chat. You can check out the Milewalk Academy. You can send an email to support at milewalk.com. But I hope that helps. That, that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty, pretty cool stuff. All right, how are we doing? Um, I want to show you guys something. I have something. I think Dana from New York is really going to like this. And I think a lot of you are going to like this. So uh, back in, oh goodness, November. Back in November last year, I built a, uh, a job search challenge program. And uh, some of you might be familiar with my job search challenge. I have a video, about a 30 minute, 30 minute video on my YouTube channel. And I decided uh, that I wanted to build this awesome five module uh, package that really was, in my opinion, in I would say this is pretty statistically accurate, the, the biggest and toughest job search problem for people, right? You all know how to do your jobs, right? You, all, you can write a resume, you can get a template, you can do all that stuff. But surface in the interview, to me, is the hardest, and, and there's a whole host of things that are at issue with this. So I created this job search challenge program. Remember a few minutes ago I was saying about the, the somebody who, who reached out to me with the 400 submittals into the applicant tracking system wasn't having any luck? Well, this is that person's solution, and just about every single one of you, this is your solution. So I'm, I built this job search challenge, and I'm offering it for free. So I want to show you how to get this. So real, real quick here, um, this is, I want to um, pull up the Mile Walk Academy and I want to show you and uh, let me see what my screen, should, there we go. Okay, if you haven't been to the Mile Walk Academy lately, um, if you have not been, all right, I want you to head on over and check this little beauty out so in here there is uh actually the power of your personal stories available if you don't have interview intervention get it okay so that that's that's free now well there's some things you can buy there's the leadership monthly and the the things i just mentioned uh for bernice now if you keep scroll those are the ebooks um webinars people okay I got these really awesome challenges. Uh, the Master Your Craft Challenge is really sweet. Uh, it's a nine-dayer. But the Job Search Challenge, all you need to do is you just need to go here, you click. Then what's going to happen is you're going to come to this page, and it's really sweet. Um, so here's how the challenge works. You come here, you sign up. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. And then on the first day, you get a, hey, it's Andy. Welcome to the challenge. All right. And then I, I take you through what the challenge is. And then over the next three days, I tell you exactly what you need to do. How do you identify the employers? How do you target people at the employers? Right. We're not going through the ATS system, folks. All right. And then what do you say to them when you get them? And then you're going to run into a whole bunch of problems, okay? So when you run into a whole bunch of problems, then what you're going to do is you're going to, you're, going to, you're going to watch this module about how to overcome the challenges, all right? Now, all you need to do is you go, you go to this page, you look at my pretty face, you say, thank you, Andy, and you go, all right, start the challenge, and you're going to come to this page here. Oh, that's my little Gmail thing. No, don't mind that. Um, you're going to get this little page. If you are an existing Mile Walk Academy member, okay, if you if you got, so over here, if you got an account with us, if you've got interview intervention, if you're in the you know interview course or whatever, uh, use your existing email address, okay, whatever that is, and then put your password in. If you're not, just put a free account, and then off you go. And then what's going to happen is you're going to get a nice email from me, and then you're going to log into a system that looks like this. It's going to say, welcome to the challenge, and it's going to tell you a little bit about the challenge. If you have any issues, you'll, you'll figure out how to call us. okay? And then what happens 
is you're going to get this system and the first day you're going to have this unlocked it's going to say the challenge and then it's going to say day two coming soon day three coming soon and then each one of these is going to come the next day so if you sign up today you're going to get the challenge today you're going to get the identify the employers tomorrow you just go into these little beauties and there i am each one of these is about 30 minutes you got a workbook it's pretty cool you can get in here and say oh no comment you be the first one to comment in here hey andy i'm rocking and rolling loving this and then off you go and then the next one is like you know 27 minutes and the next one is let's see let's get 25 minutes and the next one is 34 minutes and then the last one because we're all gonna have a whole host of problems that i had to bring harley in to to, to, to show you but that one's about about 49 minutes it's really really awesome you know we go through here we kind of recap that stuff for you so i hope you take me up on it because it's pretty dang sweet stuff let me um let me get out of here and let me get back to here so i hope i don't want my phone keys right so i hope you enjoy that so Kara, can can, can do me a favor pop that sucker in let these guys get rolling. By the way, we've not advertised this yet. So you all are going to be the first wave. You you live office hours folks or anybody who's watching this on the recording tonight. Um, we figured we'd announce it to you. Get in there. Play around with it. Check it out. Kick ass. Let me know how you're doing. I want to see the victories. I want to see, oh my God, Andy, I just got four interviews today. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Do that. Do that. Please. Please. Okay, so cool, cool, cool stuff. All right, and if you're loving this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure you click the little, the like button on YouTube loves the action. I've been watching a lot of YouTube content creator videos. They, YouTube tells us they love the little thumbs up button. So hope that helps. I hope you guys are as stoked about that as I am. I can't even, I don't even know what you're saying in the chat, but let me know um let me know if you're if if you're loving that because i i really um I, I was so stoked kara and i have been working around the clock to make sure that that thing was available for you today uh and stacy's telling me christine is the job search challenge self-paced so uh you it, it is uh but you, there's a time limit you get like two weeks to do it okay so because i want you in it and i want you doing it so what happens is you 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 get in all that's free okay it's free you get in you get the first one and then over the next three four days you're gonna get the whole thing that give you a whole nother week to work it to get the lesson you got the booklet and all that good stuff and then you can either keep it or it goes away okay that's it it's so so valuable um be, and i i just i wanted to figure out a way to get something like this in your hands i hope you appreciate i can't leave it with you forever unless you're in my boot camp or something like that so please it is self-paced you got a couple of weeks once you get in it to do it i paste it out each day so that you're not you're not trying to do everything at once that's not a good way to go through this you need to learn it you need to learn it properly you need to make sure you know what you're doing but i give you all the answers okay it's all there for you so i hope you um i hope you i hope you check it out i really i really do it's a it's, it's a really really great great little package i mean people are just not offering stuff like this for free all right let me see where are we at uh rafael how to format my linkedin so i can apply for jobs in two fields i graduated from the university in uh with a degree in mechanical engineering but i want to apply for jobs in the tech industry as well uh, Raphael, fantastic question. Actually, I see you got multiple. If you uh, have a degree in mechanical engineering and you want to apply for positions in the tech industry, you do not need to change your LinkedIn profile. Okay. My guess is, based on your handsome-looking picture right there, you're a young guy, and you since you pointed to graduating. Uh, I'm assuming recently, you don't need to worry about it. I, in fact, here's part of Andy's personal story, was an electrical engineering undergraduate. I have a bachelor's of science in electrical engineering, and my first job 
was with Anderson Consulting, which is now Accenture, which is an information technology consulting behemoth. So you do not need, for somebody like you, I'm answering your specific question, you do not need to change, okay? So, uh, so you know, if we ever package this up and this ever lives on in, in rerun land, it's going to say, if I'm a recent college graduate and I want to switch industries, do I have to change my LinkedIn profile or do something wacky? And the answer is no. And Raphael, good luck to you, my friend. Go get the job search challenge. Hey, Varun, how you doing? All right, Rena. Let me see what you got here for me. How do you justify your accomplishments if undocumented? No min your annual appraisals, PL statements reflecting impact due to your contributions. Rena, you need to look at my webinar called Three Secrets to Get Your Resume Noticed. And then you need to watch my resume playlist. I take you through all that. 99.9% .9 of the world has that issue. And it can be handled in those assets. Hope that helps. All right. Let me see, Carla, what's this? What is the best way to reflect boot camp experience on your resume when you're trying to transition into that role and the boot camp is only practical experience you have doing that job or skill. Carla, I am so sorry. I do not know what you're asking me. I, 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 I actually don't. I, you're saying you've got boot camp experience. You're trying to transition into the role where you have this boot camp experience, which I'm assuming you mean a training course. Um, you could certainly move your education up to the top or your training up to the top or put that in your career profile. I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, if you want to repackage it, I'll, I'll do my best to help. All right. Um, let me see. Varun, I'm following your resume template. However, given my years of experience, the template will be about three pages. Do I make a one to two sentence for my early, I am following your, I see two, I, I'm not, uh, let me see if I can get this, squeeze this on here. All right, Varun, let me see if I can get you in here, buddy. Hang on. <laughs> All right, Varun, I think, I think this is, this is what the people need to see. All right, Varun asks, I'm following your resume template. However, given my years of experience, the template will be about three pages. Do I make a one to two sentence basically for his early experience and not most recent for experience? So when, okay, Varun, you're the same age as I am, okay? We're, we're both 53, we've been working 31 years or 32 years or whatever it is. People, Varun, everybody, I don't care if you're 100 years old. You can make a one-page resume, but I give you a whole grace page. Two pages. What you need to do is, the further away from today that you get, shrink the text, not font-wise, the, the number of words that are way at the bottom. I could do a 10-year clip in my experience in one or two lines tops, way at the bottom. So if, if you're struggling, with, with three pages and you can't get it down to two, I'm telling you, you're spending either too much time in the early years or or you're spending too much, uh, too many bullets in the current years. So the last 10 years, 20 years, you're, you're documenting too many things. Everybody, I'm gonna repeat this for the millionth time. Your resume is not a document of your work history. It is a marketing vehicle for where you want to go, where you want to go. It is not about where you've been, right? Even though we use our history and where we've been to articulate a story that helps us get to where we want to go, package it so that it is it has the information on it that's aligned to where you want to go. A lot of what you've done over 30 years does not apply. It does not. It really does. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. I don't care what your job is. I don't care where you live, where you work. It makes no difference. Okay. Now, the only exception, now that's commercial resume. The only exception to that 
is if you are in an academic profession, if you are a doctor, if you are a professor, if you are you know, lawyers, other people who use CV style resumes that can be 35 pages, that's okay because that's just the way it's done and they want to see all your publications and they want to see your references and they want to see all that good stuff. So you need to trim it. You know I love you. That's some tough love, but you, you can do it. All right. Let me see. Where are we at? I'm trying to think about... Oh, another announcement. Um, we switched... E For those of you that are on my email list, we switched email providers and the way that we're delivering emails to you. It's just a... still says from me, coming from our support at milewalk.com email address, but it's coming from a different email provider who we love. Who we love. It's the same, it's the same software company that helps us with the Milewalk Academy and that you know, that we deliver our training to. Um, but being that it's a new provider, it might be going to your junk or spam filter or your ISP might be blocking it because we are sending lots and lots of emails at one time. Meaning Tuesday morning at 6.30 my time when I send out my weekly digest, it goes to lots and lots of people. So they, the internet knows that. So just make sure if you're not getting the Tuesday morning email which would be 6.30 my time, basically 6.30 a.m. Central, or you're not getting the live hour, live office hours announcements, make sure you put us on your safe list or you email us or, or let, let me know if you're not getting the emails because uh, I want to make sure that you're getting them and I want to make sure you know where I am. So, enough on that one. All right. All right. Evan Helford, how you doing? What can I expect in a second interview? I went for an in-person interview a few weeks ago and I've been called in for a second interview tomorrow. Any tips? Much appreciated. Thank you and Evan, you are welcome for what I'm about to tell you. So, a couple things. I don't know if you all know this, but I have an, a video out there on how to ace the second job interview. It probably is titled something like second job interview colon tips to crush it or something like that. Go check that video out, and in there you will find that. Now, 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 I want to, I want, I want you guys to keep something in mind. A first interview could be a phone screen, it could be a quick screen, it could be a quick call with the HR, it could be a quick call with the hiring official, it could be many different things. The second interview, depending on what the company does or the way they recruit, I mean, could be. Uh, you know, another call with HR, it could be a call with the big boss, it could be a tech screen, it could be a get to know a teammate, it could be anything. Regardless of what that is, um, you know more, in, in, you have in, more insight on the company. Your questions need to be sharper, you're more in the know, okay? And it's about developing a deeper relationship. And if it's a second interview with somebody you've already met with, there, there should be more chemistry that you're looking to develop. I go into all of this in the video, the second job interview video. Maybe if Kara is got her dancing shoes on, she could, um, she could pop that in the chat. All right. What do we got, Wes and the kids? For Wes and the kids, here we go. Hey, Andrew, tonight I'm doing interview two of three for a senior role. The three interviewers uh, are the would-be direct reports for the role. Awesome. Any advice for the situation? Hell yes. Okay, Wes, I don't know if you have it, but I would get this guy, okay? I would get this guy because in the storytelling chapter of interview intervention, there is a, uh, a methodology that I go through. One of the points is getting them to care about you. I'm not going to go through the whole methodology. I go through the methodology in the book. I go through the methodology in the three keys to ace any job interview webinar as well. I go through the five points, the, basically the pillars of the way I want you guys to tell stories. 
and one of them is getting them to care and the people that care about you are going to be are going it's going to be easier for them to care about you if you show you care about them if these are going to be your staff members you want to make sure that you are connecting with them so that they feel loved connected to you and know that you are going to make their lives better now that's not about coming in and saying oh, i'm a softy boss you do whatever you want that's not what i mean people want to be challenged they want to be appreciated. They want to be supported. They want to be mentored in the right way, not over-mentored, right? They want some structure. They want some guidelines and so on. You need to highlight that for them, your style in doing these kind of things. But before you do any of that, you need to ask a question about what they want, what is of interest to them, what do you feel are some things you'd like to improve about your working environment? Get their information first and then you tell them your philosophy or your approach to how you would handle that, help them, change that or whatever, but don't be too brash or don't have too much bravado about how you're going to change company policies and protocols and these and that. Appreciate it and then share your philosophy and say, well, one of the things that I would do when I get here is I would look into that. I would, because that seems to me like I agree with you, right? I mean, I think we, right, that doesn't seem to make sense, but, but perhaps there's a reason the company does it that way. If you know that, please share it. Otherwise we can get to the, you know, we can get to the root of it. When I join him, we'll, we'll work on change. It's those kinds of things that you want to do. Go back to all the videos that I talk about where you've got to sell, sell to the gap, right? When, when, when an employer is asking you about the value you're going to contribute and all that good stuff, you want to tell them about how awesome you are as it relates to what it is they need. You don't want to go tell your director, same thing with the director person. You don't want to go tell them about how awesome you are if they don't care about that stuff, right? I care about this. I care about that. I care about your ability to do this or that or change this or that or teach me this or that. When you might be thinking, well, geez, if I was you, I'd want to know this. Don't make those assumptions, okay? But I, I, I think that's a great, great question. That's how I would handle interacting uh, with, you know, with, with the staff members if I, was a, if I was a manager. Hope you do well and lots of luck to you and the kids. All right. Okay, what do we got here? Patty from L.A. All right. Must be a Dodger fan, Patty. Hi. Uh, I temped at various agencies for a little under a year while waiting for something permanent. Awesome. How do I list this on my resume? So, fabulous question, Patty. So, effectively, any of you who are contractors for any amount of time, consecutively, any of you that are contractors for any amount of time consecutively, meaning all of your runs are like patties where they're continuous, meaning I tempt here, I tempt here, I tempt here, I tempt here, and I did all this in the confines together. It was continuous. You make one line item on your resume, and you could say, you know, Patty Inc., Patty Consult, Consulted, through various staffing agencies to perform project management services for Fortune 500 companies, whatever. You could take out the little blocks and put in whatever your analysis, small to medium-sized businesses, business analyst duties, accounting services, whatever it is, okay? And then highlights include and then list three, three companies. If you did 10 temp jobs, don't list them all, okay? Just list three and then three bullets, you know, company A, company B, company A. served as blah 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 to do this, that, and the other thing at whatever, boom, boom, boom. And then if and then what I would do is I would look at where I was applying and I would try to pick the places you worked at that are most in alignment with where you want to go. So if you if if you worked as a contractor for over 10 years, that's a little different. 10 months, a little different you know, two years, a little different because you, you know, you only want to spend an appropriate amount of real estate on your resume. You can always have a supplement document. Okay. That has all of the temp jobs. If there, if there's an extensive number, Patty, great question. Hope that helped. All right, guys, are you subscribed to my channel? Please make sure you're subscribed. Please click the like button. If you, uh, if you're enjoying this, we're going to go till quarter past the hour. So I still got 25 minutes. Get in the job search challenge. All right, I can't wait to see how many of you sign up for that thing. 
It's awesome. Awesome fun. Get in there and let me know how you're doing. All right. Oh, one thing I want to say about the Job Search Challenge, for all you boot campers, don't get in that. You already have all of it. You have a different package. It's a it's a more detailed thing, and it's all ready for you, and it's all, I didn't, I didn't drip, uh, it's called dripping. I didn't do that to you. All right. What do we do to an industry? All right. Iris. Iris the fail safe. What do you do if you are new to an industry and don't have the usual or expected experience? Iris, what you didn't tell me is do you already have the job? So if you are new to an industry, I would, I would, I would be doing a lot of thinking about what I've done in the past and how it maps to the new industry. And I'd be doing a lot of homework and I'd be doing a lot of getting up to speed and I'd be doing a lot of watching on YouTube and reading in the books and reading in the blogs and reading in the influencers. So um, if you wanna clarify, I'd be happy to give you more color, but but I, it sounds like you are already in a role. And if, if, you, uh, if you are, that's what I would do. If you are not and you wanna make the change, um, it depends how you're making the change. So this is important too. If you are a project manager and you've worked in healthcare and you're switching to the financial services industry or the manufacturing industry or business services industry or whatever, well, you're still a project manager. It's not a big step. It's not a big leap. Yeah, there are some differences. That project managers can figure that stuff out really damn fast. Okay, if if you are you know doing something in media and entertainment and you're going over to pharmaceuticals. Or whatever well that could actually be similar too it depends on what your role is if your role's in sales it's like lickety split and get going right if you're in operations it's going to be a lot different so all that stuff depends context is important there so check try, try that out evelyn oh my boot camper how are you um let me see how we doing All right, Kara and Stacy have been kind of silent. I like it every now and again when they tell me everything's okay. So can one of the two of you tell me everything's okay? <laughs> and do we have any questions about the job search challenge? That thing is just so fun uh, and so helpful that I really think you're going to enjoy it. If you've got any questions about that, before we get off, I want to answer them for you. Um, it is a we put a lot of effort into getting that to you. I want to make sure you're successful with it. So, um, so ask away, and then they can always they can always pop me the uh, the question. All right. What do we got here? Wait, I think that looks like a very nice remark there, Marcy. I think I remember you from last week. I'm so grateful that you followed your heart to reach out and help others where you've seen need. You do help us to find strength even when we think we have none left. Marcy, that is awesome. I love you. I really do. And that means the world to me. And don't think any of you for one second that I don't appreciate that stuff. I have rough days, dark days. I work a lot. This office is jet black in the morning. 5 a.m. I'm at my desk moving. That is not a complaint. Okay? I wouldn't be here doing it if I didn't think it mattered. But every now and again, I love to hear that. I really do. I really do. Thank you. Thank you for that. Love it. All right. What do we got here, Adam? Adam Stark. Hey, Andy and everyone else following your getting the job after being rejected. At what point should you ask if they know any other company who is hiring and how should you ask it? Beautiful. Great Great question, my friend. So first thing, let's level set here for everybody who just found me an hour ago. I have a, a, a technique that I put out a long time ago about how to get the job after being rejected. So basically, you use this technique. There's a video. Maybe Kara can put it in the, in the chat. There's a video out there uh, that when you are in an interview process, so not I'm not talking about you sent your resume in the ATS Bongja. I'm talking about You've been through a process, a recruitment process. You met people. You talked to people. Okay? And it's ideal if you've actually spent a little time with the company as opposed to a 10-minute phone screen and the recruiter says, well, you're not what we're looking for. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you went in, you met the hiring official, maybe you had a text screen or two. Didn't work out. Okay? I want you to send this message 
at the very end to put a bow on it that says, thank you very much. I really appreciated it. Sorry, it didn't work out. There's some language I give you, okay? Now, what Adam is asking is, all right, I I sent that. Now, I want you to follow up with them 30 days later. Now, two, two avenues. If I go through, let me run the scenarios for you. If I go through an interview process and I get down to the end and I really spent a lot of time with these people, like I really know them, they really know me, they decided to go a different route, okay, somebody else. They balked, meaning we took you through the whole process. We decided to hire nobody. Something changed. You, like this stuff happens, right? I'm sure a lot of you, give me a shout in the chat if this has happened to you, right? You spent all this time. The employer says, we're going to wait till next quarter. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we decided we're gonna, not going to have that position. Whatever. Stuff happens often, right? If I, something like that happens, I would send the, the rejection and I would immediately say, all right, listen, I love you. I would call, like, call. Like, I would say, I love you. I, you know, I, I want to stay in touch. I really want to work with you. But as you can see that I'm in the middle of my search, is there any other places you know? You got any other recruiter friends? You got any other hiring official friends? You asked the sales guy who you were interviewing with. Do you got any other sales buddies? This stuff works if they like you and they just chose somebody else, right? Immediately, I wouldn't even waste time. Like zero minutes later, if it was kind of lukewarm, now you got to question whether they're actually even going to bother. But I would go in 30 days later. I would say, hey, following up, I'm still you know, actively searching. Uh, would love to know if anything's changed on your end. If nothing's changed on your end, I'd love to network with you in any places that you know, you know, because you know me based on my background that you think might be suitable or that I ought to investigate. That's what I would do. I would go, I would go those routes based on those scenarios. That's a great question. That is a great, great question, Adam Stark. Thank you for contributing that. All right. Steve G, great to see you. Michael Adams, how are you? Davida. Davida, you know all your comments on LinkedIn make me smile. They really do. Uh, wait, by the way, I don't, I don't, I keep forgetting, I always forget to say this. If we are not connected on LinkedIn, I want to know why the hell not. Send me, a, send me an invite. Just say, hey, I'm in your community. Hey, I'm a boot camper. Hey, I'm in your interview course. Hey, I got your book. Hey, thanks for the videos. Whatever. I'll know, who, I'll, then I know who you are. And I can look at your background. All right. Michael Adams. Let's take a look at this one. All right, Michael Adams is asking, can you speak to the perspective of the get back in the game mentality, taking a, a, a job that may be a bit less than what you hope for versus working to get the ideal job, especially for 50 plus? So, okay, great, great question. Couple, couple of things. Again, like in all of these questions and in all of your individual situations, context is everything. So if you are unemployed, and you have been unemployed and the money's running out, that's one scenario, right? Take what you can and keep going and keep looking, you know, do a good job, but keep looking, right? If you got enough in the bank and you can keep going and you want to target the right place, the 50 plus thing, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say two things that might sound polar opposites. Ageism is a thing. It is a thing. Don't let anybody tell you it isn't. They'd be lying to you. It is not an insurmountable thing, okay? So I've tried everything. I'm 53 years old. No one's going to give me a job. Well, first off, that's bunk. Secondly, you're not looking in the right places. You're not looking hard enough. You're not working it smart enough. You're not networking appropriately. You're not doing the jobs or challenges. You're not doing these things, okay? That's what I would say. There are jobs out there. There's 7.7 billion people in this world. There's tons of companies. They're all over the place. You can do things to get a job with a company that would love and appreciate you at whatever age you are period okay now then it starts to come to personal situations like sherry who i mentioned got the kids right the girls are going to college she's got a wedding to pay for she's got this and that right needs the money okay cool she goes and takes a job it was not her ideal job much like toronto dan right commission based only but she made some money 
made it happen, got in the game, was a little easier to find that next job, and kept going and broke into where she wanted ideal job. Okay, so I would say, Michael, I'd say the same thing for you. And the other thing that I would say is I've actually got a video out there that focuses on your happiness in your job search. And I, I think the title of it is uh, Focus on, oh God, Kara, you know what? Can you, can you, um, uh, you're going to have to check me on this one. But it was about staying positive in your job search. And there's, there's basically five metrics that I want you to monitor. And as a matter of fact, Michael and anybody else, if you get in the job search challenge, you'll know what those metrics are. You'll know how to follow them. You'll know how to determine if, if you have a healthy job search. We, we, we have people that have been struggling for a year or two that sign up for our job search boot camp. And once we get them in order, the job offers start flying. And a lot of them are in their 50s and 60s. So believe me, the stuff works. And, and I, I don't believe you're in the, in the uh, programs, but even so, getting that job search challenge. And, and that, if you do that, the, 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 the big thing for Michael and everybody about the job search challenge, one of the reasons we get unhappy in our lives is because we don't feel in control of what's happening to us. And I would argue life happens for you. It doesn't happen to you. And in order for you to regain control, at least mentally, the illusion of control, but feel in control is when you are doing things that are totally within your control. So as an example, when I put my resume into an applicant tracking system, that part is in my control. But what happens from that moment out, I, have, I can do nothing now. Lots of times we don't feel in control because we feel either we're at the mercy of the applicant tracking system or we, or we have limitations based on publicized job openings. Well, here's a newsflash for you. Less than 20% of jobs are actually posted. 80% of the jobs in this world, 80 plus, are not online somewhere, okay? So what can you control? You can control identifying target companies. You can control finding people. You can control sending messages. And you can keep doing that day in and day out until you find your job. No one can stop me from sending a message. No one. And yeah, somebody somewhere who's not well adjusted is going to get upset that you sent them a nice email, right? Move on to the next one. So what? And if you do this at a steady flow and your outflow is constant and it's consistent and it's good, good things happen. If you sit there and you wait, nothing happens. So getting back in the game and, and the mentality and picking up your happiness level has a lot to do with whether you feel in control. We call it balls in the air, bittas. Well, every day, if you have balls in the air, you're not going to care if somebody gets back to you or not. You won't because you're going to just keep going, 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 going until you find the right one. Steady diet every day. That's, that's what it's all about. That's why the job search challenge works because it, it changes this and it changes this. Okay. To, I give you all the templates. All right. You got them all. It's, 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 it's changing your mentality and changing how you think. And you know, the way we process the world, a, a lot of, uh, a, a lot of the events in our lives occur based on our attitude, but also the way we see them changes the future in the way in which we're operating in this world and things that happen for us. So, 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 so try that, check that, check that out. I hope, I hope that job search challenge helps you. I think it will definitely increase your happiness. And I think we've got a question. Um, actually, I think that was from you, Michael, on the job search challenge. Can you do the challenge if you live in one city and are moving to another, moving from Gainesville, Florida to Atlanta over the next 30 to 45 days? Should I wait on the challenge or move forward? I bet you if you work the challenge right now, you probably have a job by the time you get there. Okay, so I mean, I mean that. Right? No one ever wants to promise you anything, but I'm telling you, if you work it the way I laid it out, you're gonna have you're gonna have good luck. And and the, this world and and what we live in right now, it doesn't matter if I'm searching for my job down the block or on the other side of the world. Right? We're using the same tools. There are some nuances that you might have to to do because you're targeting companies right in Atlanta because you're in Gainesville. But I have a video for that. It's called how to get an out of state job. Go watch that one. Channel and <laughs> job search. So basically, get the job search challenge. Go watch that video. Make the tweaks I tell you. There's nine steps in how to get an out of state job. 
all, a couple of them are gonna apply right away to you, to what you're gonna have to alter, and off you go. I, I, you know what, I, I hope I see a little shout out here in a chat somewhere in the next month from you. Let me know how it goes, Michael Adams. Lots of luck. All right. And you love the book, and I, I, I'm, I'm glad you got it. Folks, it's 80-something dollars worth of assets I'm giving you. It, it, at the end of the day, if you want to black box this sucker, it costs you $7. Get it. Give it to your kid. Read it. Give it to your friend. Mom, dad, aunt, uncle, whoever. Do it. Do it. All right. Whew. All right, here we go, Bernice. Job posting for chief of, I'm assuming you mean staff, encourages creativity in the cover letters, presentation, and CV for selection criteria, presentation, and content advice. I, uh, how do I want to say this? Um, when, when you are talking creativity, I don't want, the communication to me needs to be a combination of casual, professional, on point, direct, tight, all that good stuff. And the creativity could come in the CV, my portfolio, all these other things. You could even, if you wanted, you know, in some way, shape, or form, uh, if you've already gotten a job and you want to flower up your resume or you want to give them a different version of you or you want to come in with a presentation of what you would do in the first 90 days or something like that, I think that would lend some credibility to you. I don't love um, general state, not this is not you, I'm talking about companies that make these general statements that don't give you a clue as to where they value the creativity, but that's how I would approach it. I would not approach it in all my upfront communications. I would approach it in in what, what as I'm getting to the interview, in the interviews, and all that good stuff. But that would be my that would be my advice there. Michael Avery, my boot camper from Denver. Hey Stacy, how are you? Let me see. J Reth. How do you address apply to a job that requires two to three years of experience? I check all the other boxes of requirements, short and sweet. You do it. You do it. Job descriptions, people, are dreams. They are the employer's dream, okay? I want 10 years of experience in this industry, managing these kind of people and these kind of customers at these kind of places. And I want you to hang out at these kind of bars. Like, that, like that's what they have. They have like one or two big things that they need. You need to know what those are and what the, what's the formula. If you got some inkling of what you do, which I'm sure all you do because you're all pros, right? You know what the big things are that matter. If you have it, you apply. In your case, j when they ask for two to three years of experience, the so first thing that I would do is I would try to network my way in. Always. That's going to be my answer for everybody at any age, at any place, at any time, forever and ever, till they, you know, disseminate my ashes over the beach somewhere. Um, when when they're asking for two to three years of experience, that's great, but that's not a ton. Okay? If you got some training in it, you got some self-study in it, you got some anything you can advertise in it, you've got analogous projects, analogous stuff, analogous schooling, you got anything, go. Go. For sure. 100%. All right. Let me see how we doing. Patty, what is meant by an ATS friendly resume without a header? Where do we put our name and contact info? Patty, who's asking you to put in an ATS friendly resume? Uh, I don't know who's asking you to do that. And I anything's possible. I find it weird that companies would ask you to do that. Um, if you are talking about uh, a coach that says an ATS friendly resume, if I've said that somewhere in the bajillion words that I've spoken through these cameras to you, 
Um, what I'm saying is you are trying to optimize your resume as best you can. And when I say as best you can, I want to preface all my ATS remarks by, I don't think they're a good way to go, number one. Number two, you're never going to beat the, you know, you're never going to beat the robot. Okay, and number three, not, again, I'm not on a consistent basis. Number three, there are things you can do, yes, to increase your odds. So an ATS-friendly resume, in my, in my opinion, will have keywords that match the job description, you, right? They will be appropriately placed throughout the resume, in the professional experience section especially, and so on. All that stuff will make your resume more ATS-friendly. Also, also, there are things that generally speaking, and I stress all these words, generally, usually, typically, and so on, ATSs are all different. There's many, many dozens of them out there. But generally speaking, they like to see text. It's a computer. It thinks like a computer. So when you got a lot of symbols, when you've got tables, when you've got things that make it difficult for the computer to digest it, that makes it less ATS friendly. If you take my template, if you are in my resume writing masterclass or in my job search bootcamp, I give you the word version of the, of the template and it's all laid out for you. And if you go in there and type over it, it will automatically be ATS friendly. We know this. It works. We have the track, track record for it. If you're not in my programs and you take my public template, it's in a PDF format, you need to take that layout and move it into a Word document or text file or whatever you want to do. If you keep my format, it will be ATS friendly, so to speak. It's also, it's easy for the human eye as well. So I don't know who, where you heard that or if it was in anything that I ever said, but that's what I mean. It's, it's ATS unfriendly if you have a lot of symbols, graphics, other things. If things are not in alignment, computers like to read company, years, date, text, 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 next company, and so on. It, it assumes that after professional experience or work experience, it's going to see something from you that is that. Okay, if you have stuff on the side, you got purple bars and you got flowers at the top and you got this, it's not going to work. It isn't. It isn't. So I hope I hope I hope that helped you. All right. Let me see. Coming up on time, folks. I hope you're enjoying this. Still got about 180 of you here. I um I want to take another question and uh, but I want I really want to encourage you a couple things. Job search challenge. Jump in. We're rolling. If you want to join my job search boot camp, we have a private group coaching session tomorrow. If you're interested in the boot camp, because you're still here with me 75 minutes in, um, I'll give you a coupon for 100 bucks. You got to email me at support at milewalk.com so we can, send you, we can send you the coupon and we can send you to the right spot. So you can get in, you can join us tomorrow. Or get the replay. You get all the recorded assets. The boot camp's all ready to go. Next Thursday, the power of your personal story. It is on my YouTube channel. But if you want the workbook, which you definitely do if you're going to come to the show, uh, just make sure you opt in for that. I would just head to the Mile Walk Academy and go through all this stuff. It's all it's all there. And then on on Friday next week, we have the Leadership Monthly Live. Uh, private group coaching that is on dealing with unexpected change in your life. And any of you that were, are recently uh, got let go or decide you want to change something or whatever, loved ones, friends, companies, people, who moved your cheese? It's going to be a great. It's going to be a great, uh, great session. So hope, hope, uh, hope you'll join me for any and all of those. And let's see, Diana Dembski. Finally did it, used your info and alternative consultant layout and got my resume down to be awesome. Diana, okay, you and I, we've hugged it out. We fist bumped. We did it all, right? We drank together. I don't like the functional resumes. You know that. Um, the first thing that I think of when I get a functional resume is what are you hiding from me? I literally do that and so do 80% of the recruiters and I know that because we survey them. So I, I like chronological. If there's any reason why you cannot 
head into the boot camp and let me know and I will do my best. Frank Sewell, my boot camper. Raj, how are you? First time live attendance. Oh man, let's give Raj a big live office hours high five. Good morning, Steve G. Happy to have you, brother, mentor, guru. You are welcome. All right. Let me see if I can sneak this one in. NH. Laid off as director of IT after seven years in favor of outsourcing IT department. My two-person staff's too small for getting other management jobs. Title too big, getting a cis eng job over 50 and nine months looking. Where's the question? Ed, I'm not sure what the question is. Uh, if you were asking me what you should do, I would be looking for a director of IT role at various small to medium-sized companies. And I, I don't believe that being over 50 and nine months looking is going to hurt you. I, I really don't. If you do the right things the right way. And so I would my recommendation, if you're asking, is get in the job search challenge. I mean it. I mean it. it you need to be doing that. You need to be looking for companies that are suitable for you, that, that increase your chances of getting hired. Those small to medium-sized companies, they do that stuff. They create positions. If they've got the right person at the right price and, and the right value, they'll make it happen. They will. All right. Hope that helps. All right, everybody, get in the challenge. Get in the power of your uh, personal story live cast. It's, it's, it's the event next Thursday. The boot camp is tomorrow. Support at mylock.com if you want to get 100 bucks off. And next Friday, Leadership Monthly Live on Unexpected Change. Interview intervention and out of reach, but insider free. Everybody have a great weekend, my boot campers. I will see you tomorrow. Take care.